Hello, my name is Xiaohui Zhou. I'm a principal engineer at Slipstream. In today's short presentation, we're going to discuss energy savings of advanced control strategies. We're going to first discuss common energy efficiency measures that's related to advanced control strategies. Then we're going to look at energy savings versus effort. We're going to focusing on several individual measures that have high energy savings and low or medium effort. And finally, we're going to compare some of the top performing measures by building size. Here's a list of advanced control strategies, common energy efficiency measures. 29% of savings can be achieved by these advanced control strategies. We're going to focusing on looking at several of these today. One group of strategy we're going to focusing on are minimum VV box temper flow reductions, shortened HVAC schedules, wider dead bands and night setbacks, and optimal start. Another group of energy efficiency measures are AHU temperature and pressure reset, demand controlled ventilation. The third group of measures we want to take a look are advanced rooftop unit controls, cooling tower controls, and outdoor air damper faults and control. Let's compare the energy saving potential versus effort. This chart is from a PNNL study impacts on commercial building controls on energy savings and peak load reductions. In this chart, the effort level is on the X axis from low to medium to high. And the energy cost savings among applicable buildings in terms of dollar per square foot is on the Y axis. The circles are individual measures. The locations of circles represent the energy savings potential versus the effort. And the sizes of these circles represent the overall energy savings potential for that individual measure. So when we consider advanced control strategies, we want to start with high saving and low effort measures. Number 15, minimum VEV box damper flow reductions. Number four, shorten HVAC schedules. Number 16, wider dead bands and nice setbacks. And number 27, optimal start. The second group of measure we want to take a closer look are medium savings and medium effort. These include daylight savings, but in this course, we're not going to focus on lighting, air handling unit temperature and pressure resets, and demand control ventilation number 17, also in this group. Now let's look at the individual measures. This chart shows energy savings for a medium and large office for a minimum VV terminal box damper flow reduction strategy. The annual building energy savings on average is almost 15 to 20%, which is very significant. This strategy is most impactful for medium and large offices and has a significant impact on reheat energy. The next individual measure we're going to discuss is shortened HVAC schedules. In the simulation study, shortened HVAC schedules by four hours can save energy from 10% to 15%. Higher numbers for medium and large offices compared to small offices. There's a significant impact on cooling energy savings in warm climates and heating energy in cold climate. This is not strongly depend on climate. Higher energy savings can be achieved for medium or large buildings. Wider deadband and night setbacks is another advanced control strategy that you can implement. Increase temperature deadband from one degree to three degrees and lower the night setback temperature from 65 to 60 will save you roughly 10% of natural gas or electricity. The next measure is optimal start. 
The baseline for optimal start strategy is that HVAC equipment starts three hours before occupancy. The optimal start strategy will determine the optimal start time for HVAC equipment. 5 to 15% of energy savings can be achieved for almost all buildings and in nearly all climates. And gas savings is typically higher because HVAC operations in the coldest part of the day are avoided. The next measure is supply air temperature reset. The air handling unit supply air temperature reset reduces the use of heating in terminal box reheat coils. And the energy savings are highest in mild climate with frequent cool weather, such as Los Angeles or San Francisco. The energy savings for static pressure reset strategy is mostly on electricity. Mostly this strategy save fan energy. Another measure we want to talk about is the demand controlled ventilation. Demand controlled ventilation can be based on occupancy sensors, can be based on window switches or CO2 level. When there is no occupant in the space, the temperature of that zone will be reset and the airflow will be controlled at the minimum level. This strategy could have significant savings for buildings with variable occupancy rates. The energy savings will be lower for medium and large offices because there's typically no zone by zone CO2 based sensing and control. For this strategy, higher savings can be achieved for cold climate. In the outdoor air damper faults and control strategy, air side economizer is the baseline. This strategy is basically fixing those issues with air side economizer like leaky dampers. Small buildings often benefit from this measure because rooftop units are often not well maintained. Now let's look at the top performing measures by building size. For electricity, for a small office, Advanced rooftop unit controls can have as high as 7% of electricity energy savings. Minimum VV terminal box damper flow reductions can have as much as 16% of electricity energy savings. For large office, cooling tower controls can save as much as 5.4% of electricity. For natural gas, for small office, Wider dead bands and night setbacks can achieve minus 3.9 to 7.4% of natural gas savings. Demand controlled ventilation ranges from minus 1.5 to 0.9%. The minimum VV terminal box damper flow reductions can achieve minus 2.6 to 12.2% of natural gas savings for large offices. The advanced rooftop unit controls is adding a new control device or a control algorithm on an existing rooftop unit controller to slow down rooftop unit fans during specific operational modes. It can achieve high electricity savings, but with a strong rebound effect on natural gas. It is applicable to single zone packaged rooftop units and this measure has the most impact for small and medium commercial buildings without a building automation system. Cooling tower VFD control is basically adding VFDs, variable frequency drives, to the single speed cooling tower fans. This is only applicable for large commercial buildings with cooling towers. Apparently, you will have higher savings up to 7.7 or 8.3% in the hot and humid climates. Here's the summary of what we discussed today. High savings and low effort advanced control strategies include number 15, minimum VV box damper flow reductions, number four, shorten HVC schedules, number 16, wider dead bands and night nice setbacks, and number 27, optimal start. The medium savings and medium effort are daylight savings, Number five and number eight, HU temperature and pressure resets, and number 17, demand controlled ventilation. We also briefly talk about the advanced rooftop unit controls, but that's a high cost measure. Even though the impact is pretty significant, 
This is only applicable to small and medium commercial buildings that without a building automation system. And the cooling tower VFD controls is only applicable to large commercial buildings that with the cooling tower, this is also a high cost measure. That's the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.